Hello there, beautiful people. I just got home from our yearly big trip and this trip was to the Balkan countries. I've made a video from this trip. I will link it somewhere up here and you should go watch it. So I figured now that I'm home, now that I've been on this bike for two full weeks, 3000 kilometers, I could do a bit of a post somewhat hardcore TET trip damage assessment slash findings just to share with you guys. I know there's a lot of people interested in the bike. I'm getting emails about it almost daily. Uh, people wanting me to compare it to different bikes and what do I think about this or that and I promise there will be a full review. This will however not be it. Uh, I will share a few thoughts along the way but the full review will come later on. I need more time with this bike. It has around 4,500 kilometers on it. Perhaps around 10,000 case, I will make a review, we'll see. By the time this video airs, however, I will not be here. I will be on the beach in Crete. I'm leaving for Crete with my family in just a couple of hours. And the wife this morning before she headed to work left me this long sandwich list of things that I have to do before she gets home. But this is way more important. So let's see how the bike did. And don't be alarmed, it did well, there's absolutely nothing wrong. There's just a few things that I've learned along the way that you will learn about in this video. All right, so let's start up with <coughs> sorry, this bike's ability to crash and how I'm not very happy about that. Now, any bike is not a good crasher, but some bikes they absorb crashes better than others. My T7s, for instance, I've dropped them and crashed them a million times and there was never any issue with the radiator. However, on the PR7, as you can see here, and I've dropped it many times on both left and right side, and I even had a pretty decent crash on the rocks during this trip. It is the mounting tabs out here and the radiator. Now, this is nothing major at all, I know that, but along the frame here on the side, the fins are getting sandwiched against the frame. And this is not something to be concerned with. The reason why I'm talking about it is because I'm going to race this, uh, this machine on three enduro races this year. And when you do race, you will crash multiple times. And I am thinking about putting crash bars on this bike just to make sure that the radiators don't get too damaged during the, uh, the race, so I have to so I have to cancel. Uh, so I'm looking into crash bars. I'm not a huge crash bar fan. I don't like to weigh down my lightweight adventure bike with steel tubing, but sometimes uh, protection is needed for when you do go out and, and race. So yeah, doesn't seem to crash particularly well. The radiators are the ones taking the hit through the panels, but that's just how it is. All right, moving on. Before I went on this trip, I talked about how you can prevent dust from entering your engine through the air intake system. And I talked about how you should lube around the air filter element, around where the air box connects to the throttle body, and how you should use oiled pre-filters on your bike. And I'm happy to report that, as you can see, even though the bike was completely covered in dust, especially from Bosnia, a very dusty country, all these three spots were completely dust free and that means my preventive fixes they did the job so go back watch that video do the same thing if you have a PR7 and be on the safe side all right what else bash plate took a few very decent hits this one and it's a pretty beefy bash plate but I'm not very happy with how it mounts to the bike as you can see this is the tab that mounts to uh, the frame uh, underneath the engine and uh, I tried to climb a grassy hill climb a few times or two times, crashed both times. It was very steep so I started to go back and uh, I got the bike almost over me and it crashed and I think the bash plate kind of hooked on some dirt or grass and therefore loosened and came off uh, the bike and therefore got bent as well. It only mounts with a single bolt up front and hooks to the frame in the rear. And as you can see, this is already bent, so I have to straighten that out. And I will continue to use this very bash plate 
but I kind of feel like it should have been a different mounting solution. Not really sure how, but yeah. And, and I also thought the bench plate would not get any hits on this trip because the ground clearance is so tall, but I'm a heavy guy, so I'm already using like 40% of the, the suspension travel just by sitting on this bike. All right, moving on to the exhaust. And as you can see, it has taken a few decent hits. Um, but when I got this bike from the factory, it was already rubbing on the swing arm, which isn't... Uh, I don't think a new bike should do that. I think they should have been aware of this. Uh, but uh, after a few hits on the right side, it started rubbing even more. As you can see, nothing major, nothing T7-like. But I've uh, shimmed it out or, or used some spacers to, to push it out uh, even further. I will need a few extra now that everything seems to be even more bent. But I will most likely eventually get the power-up kit that contains or has the, the Doma exhaust, the titanium one, which is much uh, thinner. So there will be more clearance to the swing arm. All right, what else have I found regarding this bike? So this is the filler neck and that goes into the tank here. This, the diameter of this will quickly, this will just quickly be overfilled. And when you fill your bike, gasoline will just pour out of the neck. So you have to fill it really slowly. And um, yeah, the, all the guys had to wait for me every time because I had to sit there like tch, 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 to get all the 70 liters into the tank. Annoying, but it is what it is. I would, I'd rather have that solution and the tank under the bike instead of the tank up front and, and have it refill quickly. What else have I learned? Uh, the rear brake. Okay, so, so the, the brakes on this bike they are excellent. They are Brembo's, the, the bike is somewhat lightweight, so it stops quickly and I'm very happy with that. But the rear brake, as you can see, with enough pressure, it hits the, the exhaust here. And I'm not really, I, I haven't looked into adjusting it, but I don't think you can move this enough upwards to have maximum pressure before it touches the exhaust and that's kind of annoying I mean at this point it's almost locks up the rear but there was times on this trip sorry my bit sick still uh, <coughs> where I stomped on the brake or the rear brake to to make a power slide or skid turn or whatever and and it didn't happen it just kept rolling because there wasn't enough pressure could you use more oil in the system? I'm not really sure, I have to look further into that. But that was a minor annoyance uh, on this trip, a few times. But I'm happy with the brake performance when that doesn't happen. The front brake is really eff effective, so yeah, nothing major, but it's a few things that I learned along the way. And I believe, my dear friends, that is pretty much everything there is to know about this bike after these 3000 kilometers, hardcore kilometers. The bike did perfectly well. Uh, one thing I find funny, this machine, someone in Portugal said, all right, we have, an, we have a good idea. We need these parts to make an excellent lightweight adventure bike. So it, they contacted that Cherbis, they contacted Sax uh, for their suspension and whatnot, Husqvarna was SWM for the engine, all good and all of that. But when it came to the headlights, they were like, okay, Let's put, let's put on really freaking heavy glass halogen bulbs. That doesn't work at all. It's, we, we rode through a tunnel and I, I used, I, I couldn't see anything. And that is somewhat hilarious. Why don't you just put on proper LED headlights for a bike that is like, you, you gathered all the, uh, the best parts or, or the, the correct parts for your, for the bike that you want to make. Yeah, I think that was it, guys. I, uh, I need to, there was a wife calling. I need to <laughs> go through the, the sandwich list of things to do. I'm, I'm super happy with this bike. Just, just a, few, a few insights into the upcoming review. It's, it's a lightweight bike. When things get really technical, it behaves almost like 
an obese dirt bike. Something like I can imagine how the, the Honda 450L would be, which is 20 kilograms lighter. It carries, this bike carries its weight and there's nothing that I come across where I feel like, okay, this is just too technical for this bike. So that's like the, the, the off-road side of uh, things. But also when it comes to highway riding, we did lots of highway miles on this trip to, to get to the places. And yeah, it's, it's no twin cylinder and uh, adventure bike, but it's, it is very comfortable on the highway as well, doing a hundred. You could sit there for a full day without any issues, uh, especially with a comfortable stock seat. I, I completely ruined it when I upholstered mine, but I needed some more leg space. So it is a true jack of all trades, master of none. And based on this trip, it is as reliable as, as the best bikes uh, as well. Nothing major happened, uh, even though we, we kind of pushed them pretty hard. I mean, several of the T7s had some minor issues with the rear brake and not, not, not anything that's wrong, but I mean, I didn't have any issues with this bike. I cannot speak for the long-term reliability of it, but I have no doubt in my mind that this will be a re reliable steed for the kilometers to come. Very happy. All right, let's head to Crete. I want the beach in front of me and a mojito in my right hand. See you guys in the next one.